August 4th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ephesians chapter 2 from the New Testament. And although you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you formerly lived according to this world's present path, according to the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the ruler of the spirit that is now energizing the sons of disobedience, among whom all of us also formerly lived out our lives in the cravings of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even though we were dead in transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, to demonstrate in the coming ages the surpassing wealth of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, having been created in Christ Jesus for good works, that God prepared beforehand, so we may do them. Therefore remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by the so-called circumcision that is performed on the body by human hands, that you were at that time without the Messiah, alienated from the citizenship of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who used to be far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, the one who made both groups into one and who destroyed the middle wall of partition, the hostility, When he nullified in his flesh the law of commandments in decrees, he did this to create in himself one new man out of two, thus making peace, and to reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by which the hostility has been killed. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, so that through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer foreigners and non-citizens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, because you have been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. God, if there's one part of the Bible that we need to understand, it's this chapter in Ephesians, that it is by grace that we are saved through faith, and this is not from ourselves, but a gift from you. We need to understand this because so often I hear people talk about how it was them who chose you, that something they did had to do with their salvation. And none of that is true. It's for the same argument about how could you lose your salvation. You can only lose your salvation if it had to do with you. But it doesn't. It has to do with you, God. But I think the... And I've read this chapter a trillion times before. But the part that just sticks to my heart every time is the fact that but God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even though we were dead in transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. And the reason that amazes me so much is, and I know this is kind of common sense if we stop and think about it, but but we were truly dead. We are children born of Adam. We are going to sin. There is nothing in this entire world that can save us from that. There is nothing that's going to give us eternal life. There's nothing that's going to give us peace for our transgressions, for our sins. There is no grace. There is no mercy. There is nothing. To say we're dead in transgressions, dead in sin, is almost an understatement because there's nothing we can do in this life. (laughs) Sure, we can live a worldly life, but that is nothing compared to what you've offered us. And so here's the amazing part to me. 
Here we are, completely screwed up, filled with sin, choosing everything but you. Being disobedient, being obnoxious, <laughs> being selfish, making it all about us. And you love us. And I, I'm a, a little bit baffled by that because we're kind of icky people. When we're choosing sin and, and we're in this world that we're just following everything Satan tempts us with and we're and we're not even looking for a way out. We're actually choosing all of the things he offers us. Our ego and sex and finances and all the things of this world. We're not very nice people. And yet, we did nothing except continually screw up. And you still sent your son to die on the cross for us. You loved us so much. That even while we were destroying our entire world, choosing sin after sin after sin, Sodom and Gomorrah all over the place, even though we were choosing to live in the darkness, you loved us enough to give us a way to have freedom, to have eternal life. To be forgiven. To not have to live day to day with the oppression of guilt. Boy, I remember that from my life before you. And then if, if eternal life and forgiveness of all our sins wasn't enough. You want a relationship with us. You actually want to walk with us every day. Teaching us, guiding us, loving us. <laughs> comforting us, disciplining us. I know that there is literally nothing that we could do to deserve any of that. And yet somehow we still think that we did something or we still need to continue to do something to earn any of this. And you said, no, no, no. It is only because I love you that I do this. Unconditional love. In the purest sense, we don't quite get unconditional love down here on earth. Unconditional love, true love. I am going to give it to you. It is my gift to you. My grace is sufficient for you. You don't do anything. I choose you, you don't choose me. Those are all these amazing truths that we find in the Bible, God. And yet somehow we still think we're responsible. And on top of it, we not only think we're so responsible, but after you give us this amazing gift, a lot of times we still go on with our worldly life. Now, as born again Christians, we try to remove that part of our life and the habitual sin part goes away, but it's only because of your strength. It's nothing that we can do. We become like these superhumans after you give us a new heart. But all of that super part only has to do with you. It has to do with your strength, your power. You're the one who's keeping us afloat above all of this level of sin that we would have chosen. It is only your grace that is keeping us above all that sin. Now, that doesn't mean I still don't mess up daily, hourly. But I continually seek a different life because of this new heart that you gave me. There's so many pieces of you inside of me. Your fingerprints are all over me. And I want to live my life for you. It's when I am my best in this world. When I am truly living my life for you. Instead of my own selfish ambition and choices. God, we will never be able to thank you enough for what you've done for us. And we definitely can't do anything to earn what you've done for us. But I do know I can choose a life that reflects your love. Not completely the unconditional love you have for us. But I can try. And I can try and love people. And I can try and love the people that are really hard to love. And by your example to me, I can show them grace and I can show them mercy. And in doing so, 
all the glory will go back to you as hopefully they start to understand that it is by grace that they are also saved and come into a relationship with you. God, we don't know, nor do we need to know how all of this understands with your grace and your forgiveness and, and your predestination and the elect. We don't know how all of these pieces work together, but we know that they do. And you cause them all to work together for our good. And our good is very rarely what we choose. I thank you for loving us enough to choose better. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>